Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they are growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. My guest today is Jaylene Kaneni Bell, founder of Noho Home by Jaylene Kaneni, uh, and it's based on Oahu. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Melly. Thank you for so, having me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, and today we're in this gorgeous living room, which was um, <laughs> designed, decorated by Noho Home. So we'll, we'll kind of get into some of the pieces in that in a little bit. But Jaylene, we'd love to have you kind of open and share with us a little bit about um, Noho Home and how you got started. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, well, it was uh, definitely um, by accident, so to say. Um, my mom was actually a designer. Uh, she did... Uh, Hawaiian um, inspired uh, designs uh, and she sold them in McInerney's and Liberty House and um, and craft fairs all over the island and uh, quite frankly I didn't think that I, I had much creativity or artistic value but um, as it came about after college um, I came home and I started working in uh, hospitality and commercial ff &E, that's furniture fixture and equipment okay. and in um, working with architects and interior designers, what I found very quickly was that there really were not designs that spoke to our island aesthetic. So I started to create them. So you would like ask and say, oh, you know, we're looking for something that's based for something in Hawaii. And they would, what would they send you? Oh, well, they would send me pink flamingos. <laughs> oh, that seems very Miami. Pink flamingos, um, uh, fluorescent monstera leaves, um, they would send us bamboo trellises that were, you know, very European and ornate in a sense. Um, a lot of Asian designs. And really there was, there was nothing that spoke to our flora, our fauna, um, or any of our, you know, cultural experiences that we have here. So, um, you know, in collaboration with the architects and interior designers, we basically started to um, think through that process. And I um, started to designs. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. So did you, like, when you were growing up, was that something that interested you, like Mo'olelo and stories of Hawaii and the flora and fauna, or is that kind of, how did your design mind work with, like, kind of historical yeah. and, and what you had known from your past? Well, um, my mom was very active. Um, she was very active in the um, uh, movement uh, to bring OHA uh, into reality. Uh, she was the education coordinator for the Polynesian Voyaging Society, so I very much grew up around these situations, more so than not sleeping underneath conference tables or in the car, um, but I was constantly um, surrounded by um, you know, people who we would now call kupuna, um, who had amazing stories um, and that really shared, um, shared what it meant to be Hawaiian, um, and that was very much instilled with me. But again, um, I went off to college and thought I was going to have a very corporate career. Um, but it came full circle, as I think you know, many islanders do. Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't we take a look at some of the designs you can start sharing Thank with us you. some of the stories. Oh, I would love to. So we can see here uh, our beautiful backdrop as well. Yes. Um, yes. Do you want to share a little bit about what's going on here? Sure. Um, so in this, um, in this photograph here, we have uh, our pillows. Um, so we have decor pillows, we have uh, drapery. Um, in the drapery here we have, um, it's a little hard to see in the photo, but we have our upenna pattern. Uh, so upenna being fishnet. Uh, and really what we're doing um, is trying to have touch points within our prints that connect us to um, things that are familiar um, to our island, to our culture, to our heritage, to our practices. Um, in just small, meaningful touch points. In the wallpaper, um, we have our Peely pattern. And so um, there's a duality in this Peely pattern. Um, one, it is um, the name itself means uh, closeness. Uh, and so we really like to talk about that closeness and wanting to bring it into the home and to our sacred space. Um, there's also uh, the framework that it's in. Uh, is a very textural, fibrous um, uh, visual. It's very much um, like the pili grass. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the framework and structure is actually um, taken from a, a Cook Island kappa pattern um, and re-envisioned. So 
there's a lot of um, there's a there's a lot of duality, a lot of meanings that we infuse into our design, um, and often it's just one piece. And I like to say that it's a piece that contributes to the values that we're trying to um, portray in that space. Yeah. So a lot of times, um, you know, uh, home home is about values and the values that you want to uh, grow and share and portray. Um, and so really what we do is just try to bring pieces to market that help you convey that. Mm -hmm. So you, you started NoHo Home after having this amazing career, really being a designer just you know, for the big hotels and, and working for large companies. What, what, what inspired that shift to, to start your own company? So I always like to clarify, so I am a textile and product designer, not an interior designer. And I like to clarify that because what I do is I work with manufacturers. Um, I create designs and then I bring them to life. And my major goal is to be able to bring these um, uh, Hawaiian inspired designs uh, to more of a mass market to be able to have everyone share in it, but still have it be very elegant and sophisticated and not kitschy. Mm -hmm. um, which is really all that we had out there for a very long time uh, in mass. Uh, circle me back. <laughs> so, so one of the things oh, I love you crossover. Yes. 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 So yes. one of the things I love is that you, you started NoHo Home for the aunties. Yes. 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 So the um, so I was business to business. So it was always my I was always working with architects, interior designers, hotels, the military, but always business to business and commercial. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always say I did it for the aunties because over the last twenty years. Um, they, you know, they, I'd always get the, the ask, oh, can I have a pillow or can I have a rug? Or can I buy just like one? Yes. Yeah. Can I buy one bedspread? Can I buy one bedspread? And the answer was always, oh, I'm sorry. No, we have to buy 500 or each one costs, you know, $50,000. <laughs> so um, to that point, um, I decided that I'd like to bring some things to market direct to consumer um, and kind of uh, really. Um, be able to be a source of pride um, for our community mm -hmm. in being able to walk uh, into a store or go online very easily and purchase something that, you know, has some touch points and connection. So it's so neat that, you know, us as individuals now can, can, can buy, you know, a, a single pillow or a bedspread. But what's neat is that you've had so many years of experience in commercial that you know, you're not just kind of coming up with some cool pattern and creating a pillow that you have all these techno this technology behind your material. Um, I know there was one shot where there was like a spill on the pillow. Um, and I'd love for, uh, to, be sh to, sh to see that right now so that you can share what's going on here. Absolutely. So um, often to my detriment, I do come from the commercial arena. So I want to make sure that everything is completely functional. And I'm probably an over perfectionist. So uh, what we've done is we've really created um, a product that is not only beautiful, but functional. And um, so our um, decor textiles that are printed and cut and sewed here um, in Hawaii uh, all have a DuPont stain and soil protection. Mm -hmm. So that stain right there, or that what would become a stain, um, can be taken out. So like it just spills and you just wipe it right off as it's it gone? It spills, you can wipe it off, you can actually take your finger and go in there and try to get it in and, um, and then you can take it out. Wow. Run That's it under incredible. some water. Yeah. So um, one, of the, one of the stories I love hearing is about the bedspread, the dark blue one, and the story behind how you created that because it really kind of creates this like mindset when you're coming into bed, and, and I actually have this bed set, so thank you, Jaylene. Um, and so this reminds me of, of uh, my evenings, but I uh, would love for you to share the, the really neat kind of story behind this one. Oh, I'd love to, thank you. Uh, so in developing spaces, um, you know, we like to talk about the experience or what that aspirational experience would be of that room. Um, and in the case of our uh, Ho'ohio Moi, bed, ho'ohiomoi uh, in Olelo Hawaii means to be rocked or lulled to sleep. Uh, the, ex the aspirational experience was really one of, let's say, being on the hokulea out to sea under 
dark skies, uh, a, a canopy of stars, and being gently lulled to sleep. And so in, in developing that, uh, we wanted to take, you know, what were those touch points? Um, so we have the, um, uh, we have our upenna pattern, mm -hmm. uh, which is our fishnet. And um, what we've done is we've basket, we, we've done a basket weave uh, in that so that it, it, it has a flow and motion to it. And then on the other side, um, in the spirit of um, being a bed itself and um, wanting to be something of support and strength, uh, in our most sacred space, um, we have our kua pattern, which is what we call our foundational pattern or our pattern of support um, imagery itself uh, as the rock foundations. And, um, and then on top of that, um, we have our overlay pattern of our uh, kanu. Uh, our kanu design is also our logo. Uh, and it is, um, it's a graphic interpretation of the avapuhi foliage. Um, but more importantly, the name Kanu to plant um, really serves as our mission, which is to plant seeds uh, of culture and entrepreneurship, not only within our company, but throughout the community. That's awesome. So kind of speaking of entrepreneurship in the community, mm -hmm. uh, what kinds of things you know, have you been involved with? And then I'd like to talk afterwards a little bit about uh, some of the uh, bumps in the road along the way, but um, how are you, you know, contributing to entrepreneurship in the community and then what kinds of things are you guys up to? Well, you know, I think um, for, my, for my space, I really enjoy talking to people about um, students um, as well as young entrepreneurs about um, the opportunities in textiles. Uh, so an example would be, um, I've started to work with Olamana School. Um, they have, um, they have some great equipment, um, but currently they use it to do t-shirts and stickers, which, you know, there's always a need for t-shirts and stickers, but I really am hoping to expand um, their uh, thought processes in how to create patterns that are repeatable so that they can make fabric and that that fabric doesn't have to just be for fashion. It can be for home decor. Uh, it can be for um, industrial purposes, um, car covers, et cetera. So really just trying to expand um, the knowledge base. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Chaminade School kind of working with, they have a, they're the only interior design program uh, on the island. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes. How so, many students do they have? Um, you know, I can't say for sure, um, uh, but um, it's not a large program. And really, um, one of the things that we were just talking about is how we need to reach out to high schoolers to start talking about professions in um, interior design um, and creative, uh, creative uh, textiles. Because by the time that they you know, are making those choices about college, they've already kind of said, oh, you know, this is not for me, or there's no money in it, or um, they've kind of prejudged that, or they don't even know about the field in general. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Reaching out to high schoolers is, is really important so that we can actually grow um, not only the program at Chaminade, but um, you know, the community of interior design here in Hawaii as well. There is such a need for more designers. Wow. Every, all of the local designers are hiring because they do fabulous work. Um, and So was it like that when you kind of came out? As an interior, uh, sorry, textile designer, <laughs> I'm, um, that you were kind of the only one at the time, and even now, looking twenty years later, it's still a challenge that you're trying to help with some of these schools to get more interest in the local community. Yes, so I would say, um, you know, I would say when I started um, doing design in this way, I was the only person. I I actually um, do a lot of carpet design, uh, and so I do carpet design here for other places in the world as well as. Um, uh, fabric design and, and other items and I'm licensed mm -hmm. and it goes to other places. So yes. Um, but Do they it has know been, that's Hawaiian or is it, is it more? So that's a very interesting, um, that's, that's an interesting topic about, about manufacturing and the way in which things come to market. So, um, so it goes out with a message and the message is then conveyed by layers of salespeople 
and retailers or wholesalers and distributors. And so um, you, you, you kind of don't know where that message ends up. You don't mm -hmm. know where that person who has that um, textile really knows where all the manao came yeah. from. And, but, I, and oh. I love the how no ho home now that you're, in, that you're in control of that, that message comes all the way through. Exactly. Yeah, so we're gonna take a break right now. I'll be back in a few moments. Sounds good. Thanks, Maylene. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back. I'm Ellie James, host of Let's Mana Up. We have Jaylene Kanani Bell who is the founder of Noho Home by Jaylene Kanani. So welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I know we were talking about Mo'olelo and you know, when you've made these beautiful designs that have gone out to other companies, there's these layers and layers of salespeople and by the time it gets to the end user, it's quite diluted. Um, and now you've started Noho Home. This is really you know, your company. The, the story comes through all the way. And part of it's also, don't you have a lot of the, the Mo'olelo and um, a lot of this in Native Hawaiian that you that, that's on actually mm -hmm. the back of the label. Oh yes, now that was this. This was an awesome aha moment. Um, uh, my manufacturer called me and said, "Where are your care tags?" And I said, "Oh, care tags. All right." So I went to go make my care tags, and they have to be done in two languages. So I said, "Okay, well, what's my second language?" and I said, oh, Japanese maybe, and then I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is my product, I'm manufacturing it, I can do what I want, I'm going to make my care tags in Olelo Hawaii as well as That's Olelo so cool. English. Yes. That's so cool. So, um, and you know, again, just a touch point, just to normalize Olelo Hawaii, there is a movement for that, um, you know, and when you go to Bank of Hawaii and you go to take your money out. You may not actually um, be able to understand everything, but you know what the rote process is for that. Um, so, you know, it's it, that at every, you know, having those touch points at every mm -hmm. turn is, is really how we um, bring pride uh, to our language and our culture. Yeah. So you started Noho Home, and obviously it's a totally different beast than what you had been used to having been yeah. a textile designer with kind of the larger companies. What were some of the hurdles and and what's what's the, what are some of the hurdles and challenges that you face that you can share with the audience? Oh yes, well there there have been many. <laughs> um, so one of one of course is going to be manufacturing and of course manufacturing here in Hawaii. So I do both. I manufacture here in Hawaii and I also manufacture overseas. Um, and I like to say that I do it in a very um, thoughtful way. What makes the most sense? Um, what's going to get the most uh, amount of um, our mission to market, so to say. Uh, and um, so one of our desires is to bring home what I would say is the low hanging fruit of opportunity to manufacture in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenge. Uh, so what are you making here? So oh, manufacturing we, here? Yes, so we are making all of our um, decor textiles. So that would be our pillow, uh, our pillowcases, our decor pillowcases, and then our kitchen textiles. So like tablecloths? Uh, tablecloths, napkins, um, runners, table runners. And um, then we also have 
actually just announced um, that we are partnering with the Wedding Linen Company, um, and uh, we will be um, offering uh, wedding linens uh, through their uh, through their company. So yeah. So, so what other challenges have there been, you know, starting this amazing company here? Um, so I would say that, um, and this is going to be the challenge for everyone, maybe not just in Hawaii, but maybe a bit more so because it is Hawaii and it is the um, e-commerce space and learning to navigate it, to understand it. Um, and like actually, SEO? Okay. Oh, yeah. S oh, yeah, definitely. SEO, you know, customer acquisition, uh, all of the, ma the, yeah, the um, key performance indicators that we have to monitor on a daily basis and, and the content that we have to create. Um, website development um, and maintenance, um, all of those, um, and then really understanding what the marketing is, the funnels, um, and uh, I would like to thank Mana Up <laughs> for helping us with that, because really what, um, one of the challenges is getting world-class, ever-changing um, information now to yes. us here, um, and you've helped us tremendously with that. Um, as have other organizations, um, as had many, many a YouTube video. So. <laughs> well, I know, yeah, Shopify coming in and some of our SEO specialists, so that's a big area. And, and really an opportunity is technology is, I believe, really leveling the playing field for a lot of our companies who are based here in Hawaii to be at that global level because it's no longer about having your physical stuff in physically every store and across the U.S. and the world. But having that online presence, being able to tell your story and kind of navigate through all the craziness that is online, um, and that's really quite a powerful tool. So that's great that you guys are making some headway there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it definitely is kind of the, democra mm -hmm. the it's, it democratized the, um, the uh, retail sales industry. Absolutely. Um, uh, there, it, there is a um, you know, wonderful opportunity for... Hawaii and the brand of Hawaii to leverage um, uh, our native intelligence, so to say, um, and uh, grow our community on a global platform. So kind of shifting gears into super not online, you guys had an amazing uh, Mary Monarch booth. I wouldn't even call it a booth. You took over two hotel rooms. Can you share mm -hmm. that experience and, and how that's been for you engaging with the community? You know, you're really starting this company uh, because of your, the aunties and the community, but yeah. how that has been, um, you know, with the marketing and stuff like that here? Absolutely. Um, well, our response was amazing. And uh, the opportunity to come in um, to our first Mary Monarch and to do it in such a grand way um, I need to thank Noel Ross um, from the Naniloa Hotel for that. Uh, we had, like you said, we had um, two rooms that we outfitted uh, with all of our bedding as well as our um, other textiles um, and decor. And what we did was um, we had people come up and that enjoy was some a, champagne. Enjoy some champagne. <laughs> and just have a really intimate experience you know, touching, feeling, getting in the bed, um, and then just having really good conversations. I was able to share what, there's, there's no other avenue, right, um, that's so intimate and personal than one-on-one -on -one with your customer to share what the sentiments um, and the values behind you know, the product is. So that was, um, that was very, very special. But I have to say the best part um, uh, that kind of brought it full circle, it's a lot of work to bring a company to market and um, what kind of made it all worthwhile was um, I was talking with one of my aunties, um, and she picked up uh, our kapili pillow, and she walked over to me and she said, "Baby, what is this? <laughs> what does this? You know, what is this name? What does it mean?" And I, I shared with her um, the meaning and the money that we put into it, um, and then. She said, you know, it reminds me of the pico of my papale, because she's a weaver. And she then uh, shared about her history uh, in weaving and her kumu and, you know, how this pillow, she was going to, you know, use it as a connection to that whole experience and be able to 
talk story to the next person about that whole experience just because we're talking about a pillow. Um, so. And that can only happen because, you know, it's someone like yourself who is, you know, from Hawaii and has these incredible stories and really being able to convey those through your textiles um, and pillows and, and everything else that it's covering. And, and so kind of looking at that from a next generation standpoint and her being able to tell that story to the next generation, I know you said Chaminat has the only uh, training and, and in terms of textiles and design mm -hmm. here in Hawaii. You know, is there any kind of advice that you could give to young people about where they can plug in or opportunities you're seeing um, as we're, of course, trying to develop out more of these opportunities for local people, um, especially in the textiles and design world? Absolutely. There is a large creative, a, a large youthful creative community here. Um, and they're often doing, um, they're often doing talks. Um, and um, uh, there's Creative Lab. There is um, over on the, uh, out in Kapolei next to me, um, they have the film school. Um, and within those organizations, they continually um, talk about creative. And then the design firms themselves, the local design firms, they're very much invested and staked in Hawaii, you know, uh, G70, Architects Hawaii, WCIT. Um, they all run um, their own programs. They have internships, um, uh, shadowing, mentoring. Um, mm. And really, I think it's just a matter of reaching out and, um, uh, or, uh, kind of Eventbrite is an excellent place to find the latest and the greatest. Um, for events they can come to? For events yeah, that they can learn. come to, absolutely, yes. Yeah, yes. So, so what's next for Noho Home? We do have just a little bit of time left. So we did just launch um, our uh, wedding textiles. Uh, and then um, we have rugs um, that are coming our way. Uh, where can people find you? Is, oh, where can we find you? Um, well, you can find us. Um, uh, at well online at nohohomehawaii.com and we will be doing pop-ups uh, and uh, throughout the holiday season uh, we just finished up at duty free and um, we are not uh, we, we don't have a scheduled pop-up yet but we will um, you'll be popping up somewhere we soon. will be popping up soon um, we will have our soaps in your gift basket at the Made in Hawaii. The Pua Kenny Kenny? Yes, yes, our Pua Kenny Kenny so scented uh, soap. And candle. Yes. And, well, yes, the candles. Um, they smell amazing. And um, uh, we are very pleased. Um, in fact, I planted a Pua Kenny Kenny in my front yard to kind of celebrate right. uh, the launch of, of that uh, candle and soap. Well, congratulations, Jaylene. Love all of your stuff and so proud of you. And of course, Mana Up uh, Cohort 3 yes. or 2. Yes. Um, and so thanks for joining us on the show today. And congratulations. And um, looking forward to seeing you popping up lots of other places. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>